Hello and welcome back. Today we will be continuing our Victoria 3 tutorial series and we are going to be talking about research. We are going to first be talking about, you know, how research works and then we're going to be talking about, you know, the main arm you have to interact with research, uh, which is universities. We're going to talk about literacy, a little bit on qualifications, and two strategies that I think are particularly important uh, for utilizing in the context of research, which is uh, slingshotting tech and overbuilding universities. And this is going to be pretty important. Um, this video will likely not be too terribly long but there will be chapters down below um, and so we might not have a summary at the end we'll see but without further ado let's get into it all right so first up how research works there's two forms of research there's the active research, which is the most obvious form of research. Whenever you select a technology to be researching it, you're researching it with your active research, but there is also technology spread. When there are technologies available that you, other people have researched, but you have not yet researched, you can spread them and you can gain a uh, weekly progress towards gaining those technologies. And it's important to emphasize, if you, are, if you have every single tech that every other country has, you actually don't get technology spread. Which kind of brings us to um, this uh, tooltip here, which is in my opinion the most misleading tooltip in the game because what it introduces is this idea of this innovation cap innovation is the re uh the resource that you utilize to generate research other than base research which we'll talk about in just a second um and uh, this innovation cap says hey uh if you have 72 innovation that's it that's all you get you take the bag home um this is if you learn anything from this video it should be that this innovation cap is a soft cap meaning that extra innovation over this is actually useful because what it will translate to is it will translate to technology spread. Now, if we take a look at the tooltip for technology spread, um, where we, if we hover over here, if we hover here, we can see what values are coming in. You will see that we are getting 25 from base value. Um, you get to 25 and this is in each category. So this will total 75 because we'll be getting 25 base spread in military, society, and production. You also notably, get 50 free um, base value in your active spread so for a total innovation that's free of you know 125 this is going to be important to note because universities only give you plus four uh, generally speaking universities at least very initially are not going to be worth the money but coming back to this coming back to this you see that we are getting plus 10 from unspent innovation and now the reason we are getting this is because we are currently not actively researching anything if we start to actively research anything this will actually go away and the tooltip will change so if we come and take a look here uh, we will see that we have unspent innovation and now it goes away and the number will change so uh, you see it's changed in this tooltip, but it has not yet changed in this tooltip. And what this means is when you are not spending innovation, which includes the innovation that is going over the cap, 20% of that value will be converted into technology spread. Uh, this is technology spread for each category, so really a total of 60% of innovation that goes over your cap is still useful because it will allow you to spread technologies that other people have researched that you haven't, as long as, of course, you haven't researched these texts. And so this informed strategy, we'll talk a little bit about it later, but important to emphasize is you can still make use of innovation that goes over this cap. Now this cap is determined based on your literacy. If you have, uh, you know, it will be 1.5 X your literacy, uh, plus 50 will determine what your cap is for a maximum cap of 200 research. So the fastest you can actively research anything is at 200, uh, you know, ticks a week. However, there is no cap for technology spread. So you can get 300 a week, uh, you know, per category for like 900 a week on technology spread, but it only applies to texts that have been researched by other people. It's important to also really note one of the other free sources of innovation, uh, which is based on your literacy rate, you will get a technology spread equal to 75% of your literacy rate, which in the early game, especially for very small countries with that and don't have economies that can support a lot of universities, this will represent an enormous sum. So generating really high literacy will give you a lot of technology spread. We as Russia don't have a lot of technology spread because our literacy is only 15%.
Now there are a few bonuses you can get for research speed, and this has changed in 1.5. These will actually apply to the speed at which you are researching stuff, not decrease the cost of the tech, which is how this mechanic previously worked. But you can see here, we have yet to realize the bonuses on our intelligentsia, one of which includes this plus 10% society research speed. So if we take a look at the society research we are doing, which is stock exchange, the best tech in the game, we will see that we are getting 40, uh, 54 from our active spread, because we've actively selected this, um, a tick. If we come back to this interest group and let it pop where we will be getting their bonus, what it will do is it will increase this value by 10%, allowing us to research faster, which means you can stack bonuses to kind of increase above 200 innovation a tick for your active research if you are absolutely trying to blast as fast as possible ahead of everyone for particular tech. If we come back in over here, we will see that we are no longer increasing by 54, but are instead instead increasing by 59.4 so we have increased this value by 10 percent notably as far as the tooltip is concerned this only applies to the active research if we take a look here uh, our progress on banking is 16 to 49 still as a result of technology spread which is our base value that we get from technology spread uh, we get the same amount on military tech and so this percent bonus is only applying to the direct research at least as far as i can tell a very important mechanic to note is these numbers at the bottom you see here this is two and this is one this will inform how much the research costs so for example if we scroll down to a tier three uh, we will see that it costs 53.k innovation but the base value is 12.5k here or 25 uh, 12,500 and if we looked at atmospheric engine which is in a lower tier the base value is 10,000 and you see wait a minute why is it so much more expensive for rotary valve engine uh, relative to atmospheric engine and that is because because of the penalty for unresearched technologies in earlier eras. And so what ends up happening is if you have a technology from a previous era, as in the case of atmospheric engine, we have lathe unresearched, this will apply a penalty uh, for the research. And so this means that, you know, generally speaking, as a principle, researching all the tier one techs before all the tier two techs makes a lot of sense. We're gonna talk about exceptions, uh, but in this case here, you can see that this would cost us more if we wanted to go to at for atmospheric engine uh, directly, and we instead might want to research lathe into atmospheric engine, except there's a sort of play pattern that's very important. Important to note is that natural spread, your weekly technology spread will always go into the lowest available uh, uh, tier of research and so in this case even if someone had bessemer process or mechanical tools the thing we will always not spread is lathe because lathe is a tier one tech and these other techs are tier two techs so we know lathe will not spread now this brings us to what i have started to call for lack of a better you know term uh the slingshot method for researching technologies roughly speaking there's three ways to go about getting atmospheric engine here first of all we can research directly and just tolerate the uh, 2.5 k you know uh penalty we will be getting here uh and just say okay we want atmospheric engine as quickly as possible second of all we can try and be efficient and research lathe into atmospheric engine and third of all the way that the this penalty applies this 2.5k penalty it is not like the research penalty or the research bonus where we're getting an extra 10 percent. it's not the case that we're getting a malice to how much innovation goes in here we're getting the full innovation it just costs more and so what we can do and what we should do is we should research atmospheric engine and this is what i call the slingshot research atmospheric engine up to 10k and then go back and finish lathe and then come back and finish atmospheric engine you will have to put the last week in and so it's best to go to like 9900 rather than finishing it and then go back into lathe and the reason for this is once we finish lathe we do not know where our natural spread can go or will go. It can go to any of these techs uh, in our particular case because these techs will all be researched by, well, actually it's just a few of these techs, uh, but it, we will randomly roll one of the available techs because this is gonna randomly select from one of the available technologies. But until then, we will be also always researching lathe. And what the benefit of this slingshot does is it effectively allows us to make use of our natural spread for a longer period of time. If we research lathe first, then we will not be able to guarantee where our natural spread is going. If we go atmospheric engine first, we will guarantee that our spread is going into lathe, which will allow us to get rid of this malice faster. Now, uh, this kind of doesn't make a lot of sense uh, unless you're looking at it on paper. And so we're gonna take a look at it 
on paper. So we're going to jump into the browser here and we are going to see the three examples that I have outlined uh, kind of before. Below, directly researching atmospheric engine is pretty easy to kind of take out. Uh, we have 54 for our direct research in our Russia example. Important to note, most other countries have a higher literacy or most other, you know, like recognized European countries have a higher literacy than 15% and so they will be generating a lot more natural spread. But at 54 innovation, which is our current direct spread as Russia, it will take us 231 weeks to reach the 12.5k and we will get, uh, you know, the tech we want, but we will effectively waste 2.5k innovation because um, that malice will have gone away eventually and it's not a malice to research speed and so we just like sink the that into nothingness but we want to get the tech as quickly as possible okay the second more efficient way going lathe into atmospheric engine we will have 87 weeks to finish lathe we are finishing it really fast because we are doing 54 from our direct research right plus the 32 from our uh you know technology spread the technology spread is a range it's 16 to 47 32 is the average and so we will be getting both of these but once this 87 weeks is up we are operating under the assumption that we don't high roll uh, a spread onto atmospheric engine because the natural spread can go into anything else uh, that has been researched by someone else. And so we get this, and then we have 185 weeks uh, at 54 innovation in order to get 10K innovation, so it takes fewer weeks than this uh, direct research, for a total of 272 weeks. And so we see here, if we think about it in this way, you know, the kind of first two intuitive ways, we got the wee woos outside, um, we will see that it is going to be 40 weeks slower to go lay than the atmospheric engine, but the reward is we don't really waste this innovation okay so that's that however the slingshot method what we're going to do is for 85 weeks we are going to at 54 innovation a week uh directly research atmospheric engine but not finish the tech by doing this we guarantee that we will have 85 weeks where we are controlling the natural spread notice here in the lathe example where we go lathe into atmospheric engine we only have 87 weeks where that 32 innovation we can know where it's going here we will have 185 weeks where the uh, the natural spread is going to this and it's not going into some random like bessemer process type thing that we're really not that interested in instead it's going into lathe in order to decrease the cost of atmospheric engine so we don't have to pay the 12.5k so we have 185 weeks of that spread it's not going to finish the tech there will be a hundred 1580 tech on the remaining uh and then once that remaining is finished we will go down from 12.5k requirement to 10k requirement on atmospheric engine okay after that we will have 18 weeks where we swap back to doing lathe with our direct research during those 18 weeks we are still controlling uh so it's not just 87 weeks it's the entire time we are still getting the natural spread on our atmospheric engine or sorry not on our atmospheric engine we are still getting the natural spread on lathe rather uh to finish that up and so it'll cost 1580 innovation and you can see the total weeks required will be 203 weeks now to be fair to the atmospheric engine directly uh you know kind of plan if you have enough natural spread anyways um what will end up happening is you will just uh you know hit the atmospheric and you will end up just kind of wasting a bunch of innovation and you will just eventually maybe at like 210 weeks what will happen or 220 weeks what will happen is that you will finish natural spreading uh lathe and then you will just finish atmospheric engine and then you will just have wasted a bunch of innovation. With the slingshot method, we are researching it as quickly as possible while incurring no malices. And so this allows us to get it quite a bit faster than lathe into atmospheric engine, 70 weeks faster because for you know this additional 200 we have 203 here and 87 here and so for that what's that is additional 116 weeks for the additional 116 weeks we are making sure that our natural spread is on lathe instead of something random and that's why the slingshot method is going to be faster than lathe and atmospheric engine this will look of course different depending on how much innovation you have because innovation is going to control how much you know inherent natural spread you have um I think I actually had it reversed when I spoke earlier. The less innovation we have, the bigger a difference I think this makes because if we have a ton of, uh, or sorry, if we have a ton of, not innovation, literacy, 
If we have a ton of literacy, um, we will actually natural spread lay that a pretty decent clip. If we don't have a ton of uh, literacy, then making sure we get all these weeks natural spreading into lathe instead of natural spreading into something random is going to help us a lot. And so I hope this explanation makes sense because I know I've explained this in a few other spots and it doesn't seem to click as much, but getting doing this is going to be preferable and this is a play pattern, you know, it's a small thing, but you know, Victoria 3 is a game of small things and incorporating a whole bunch of small things. And you do this on most countries that don't start with atmospheric engine. You actually play this exact play pattern out where you will start researching atmospheric engine in order to guarantee your natural spread into lathe because lathe isn't really what it's about um, because atmospheric engine is so important. And so you do this in so many games, um, this exact pattern for this exact tech and also, um, later on you research ahead of time, so it's really more of an early game thing, but I do think it's an important play pattern to understand and recognize. So this brings us to the way we acquire innovation, accepting, you know, all the freebies that we get, you know, the 25 natural spread in each category, the 50 free direct spread, and the extra uh, additional natural spread that we are getting from our literacy rate. Other than this, you acquire innovation through uh, universities. And I think the thing that needs to be emphasized uh, more than anything else uh, when thinking about universities as a generator of innovation is that the cost of innovation increases linearly. We are paying for two universities universities and we are getting four innovation. If we get another university, it will be six innovation. And you do get throughput and throughput is something we're going to talk about in a little bit. But for the most part, the cost of additional universities increases linearly. The benefits of additional universities increases exponentially. What I mean by this is the value of, you know, the tech we are emphasizing here, atmospheric engine, which is an incredible tech, but the value of this is going to be contingent on how many minds we have. Uh, but the uh, cost of the uh, researching it is always going to be 10k modified by unresearched penalties and so what this means is that you know as we have a smaller and smaller economy the benefits we get from a tech is going to be less and we are it's not going to be worth it to pay for innovation as our economy grows suddenly it becomes almost irrelevant um, you know the cost of the the innovation or the innovation relative to the amount we are going to be growing our economy by unlocking new pms and various other things and so so what this means is that in the very early game, you are, or if you're a very small economy, you are not going to want to touch universities. And then as your economy gets big, you are just going to build an enormous amount of universities uh, in order to just generate as much innovation as you kind of can. And then you are really not going to care that, you know, you, you hit your cap of, in our case, it's 72, and then you just start overflowing in technology spread. And even if it's multiplied by 60%, right, you still don't care because the value of this innovation is exponential. Um, you know, if we have 100 mines, it's going to be really good. If we have 1,000 mines, it's going to be really good. And it's going to very easily pay for itself but if we have five iron mines or whatever then you can't really touch or build you know these universities and this is really important way to think about uh innovation writ large it would probably be better if implementing new techs uh you know actually took into consideration how many buildings you need to swap like in the case of pms but it doesn't and so um, more innovation as you get uh larger and larger is going to be more worth paying for so there are three chief considerations Considerations regarding where you want to place your universities and how big you want to build them. Uh, the first and most important is going to be uh, building for throughput. Uh, the second is going to be building for qualifications, and I don't think we're going to emphasize qualifications too much in this video, but we're going to talk about it briefly. And the third is going to be building for political strength. The political strength one is the fastest to explain, which is that in the capital, you do get a bonus uh, to political strength. And so very often, if you are trying to empower the intelligentsia, this plus 25% universal pop political strength is going to be a sufficient reason to want to build the universities in the capital specifically, because it'll allow them to have a little bit of a come up. Um, the second uh, you know, one which is going to be, we're going to kind of not talk about it too, too much, is going to be qualifications. You get qualifications based on literacy, wealth, and discrimination. Generally speaking, as you move towards being less discriminatory and also really importantly get your literacy rate up, uh, building the, the universities for the reasons of qualifications is going to be much, much less useful. But in particular, in the early game, building a university or two 
and I mean a university or two, is going to be nice. The thing is, is you have diminishing marginal returns on building universities for the purpose of qualifications. And what I mean is that, you know, the first university goes you brings you from 100% qualifications to 110% qualifications. That's a 10% increase. The second university you build brings you from 110% to 120%. That's effectively a 9% increase. And so it will get more and more expensive um, to increase your qualifications in terms of upping the amount and I found that you know one to two is generally a pretty good number but you occasionally want to drop some of these if you're specifically having qualifications problems however the better way to solve qualifications problems in the long term is going to be instituting uh, some type of schooling in order to get this up and so uh, you generally speaking if you have a high literacy rate and a reasonably high standard of living in, in, in a province which you generally will after having built and employed some guys up then the universities tend not to really do much of any anything it's not like your pops can be extra qualified and provide bonuses and so building universities to this uh, is going to be less useful unless you have an area that you have like conquered that has huge discrimination a common play pattern is going for great Qing provinces so if you do something like take Beijing it might be reasonable to build like five universities or as we are about to discuss 51 universities and what I mean is throughput is one of the most important things to keep in mind on universities because if you take a look at the inputs um, most of the input cost is going to be in wages and the more of an input cost is in wages actually the more valuable throughput is although throughput also does make you know every building more pop efficient and when we take a look here we see two-thirds of the cost is in wages when you increase throughput you increase the input goods and you increase the output, but you don't cr increase the input on wages. And so it makes it very, very cost effective on universities, which often, you know, in terms of PMs, will employ a lot of uh, academics, which have a really high wage multiplier. It makes it much more efficient, um, you know, uh, if you build to throughput. And so often what you do with the universities is you build up to the max economies of scale uh, pretty aggressively once you want to start building them. However, as we discussed you don't build them too much in the early game but then later on you will build them to economies of scale for now our economies of scale cap is 21 and so if we had a lot of money moving already you know i had i had already built up uh building to economies of scale would make a lot of sense here i generally look to try and build to economies of scale somewhere between 180 and 250 construction the construction kind of being a rough indicator of how much money um you know you have uh, other than this building universities in order to unlock journal entries can make some sense um there are some journal entries which give you free progress towards tech and so building two universities or five universities to unlock those respective journal entries makes sense uh, but other than that is kind of uh, you want to build two economies of scale very very aggressively with your universities and not spread them out all over the place because that is much less efficient because you will not be gaining the throughput bonus which is incredibly important especially when you consider what the profile looks like you will be paying a lot more on your innovation if you spread them out and you know kind of in the mid-ish game when you only have 150 to 250 construction this will be a very real cost and so you do want to be sensitive to throughput Okay, so what does the overall strategy look like? Well, in the early game, you can think of innovation as being very expensive uh, relative to the size of your economy, and you want to do some slingshotting. You don't want to suffer any sort of research penalties. You don't want to build a lot of universities, except for maybe one or two in order to unlock journal entries, or uh, because you are having really serious problems with qualifications in specific areas. Um, and then this is going to be kind of what you do, because innovation is expensive because the cost of innovation is linear and the benefits are exponential as your economy grows maybe about when you are supporting somewhere between 180 to 250 construction then you want to build to kind of your at the very least at the very least you want to build towards your soft cap keeping in mind that the innovation that overflows over this cap is going to be 60 percent efficient and so it's still kind of expensive so you don't really want to suffer 60 percent on it and so you build 
build at least to cap and maybe to your, you know, your first economies of scale bonus because economies of scale is going to be really good on universities. And so this is kind of where you think of it because you're reaching an inflection point where the innovation is starting to become worth it, but just barely worth it. And then as the innovation becomes really, really cheap relative to the benefits gained from that innovation, then you just start blasting and you will hit instances where you will want to put level 51 universities in multiple places and the main throttle no longer is the cost of the innovation it's no longer the cost of the innovation instead what the main throttle is going to be is we come back and it rears its ugly head technology spread uh you can only spread texts that have been researched by someone else and so if you have all the texts because you've paid for so much innovation you are actually not going to be able to you know uh get anything researched and all of this will be completely wasted except for it stimulates your economy it kind of raises your literacy in a little bit of a weird way there are some niche things but generally paying for a bunch of universities when they're not making use of the innovation or at least 60% of the innovation or 20% even, even if you're not spreading like one tech or two techs, um, 40% of the innovation, then it would still be kind of useful. Uh, but um, you, you don't want to be in a spot where you're not getting any from spread. And so this becomes the throttle where you don't build so many universities that you don't, aren't like instantly finishing tech as soon as uh, one country finishes it and you have nothing to do. But this brings up the late game strategy, or at least the late game as far as innovation goes. You have the early game, you don't touch the universities, you build a little for qualifications, you build a little for journal entries, then you have like the mid game, you know, as you are in the early to late hundreds, where you are building to economies of scale, but you're not blasting, and then you have the late game where you blast and you look to generate a ton of tech spread. What you do instead in the late game is you no longer do any sort of this slingshotting nonsense. I mean, you could do it a little bit, but trying to save that 2,500, that 2,500 isn't really a very substantive cost. And so instead what you're trying to do is you're trying to acquire the best text as quickly as possible. And so a very common play pattern, you know, as you start to get big, is to just rush stuff ahead of time really, really aggressively. An example of a tech that's really good to research ahead of time is going to be malaria prevention. And so what you do is you rush ahead of time. The reason being is that if you are skipping over a whole bunch of techs, obviously we wouldn't do it with only two techs completed, but we're talking moving one tier down with maybe five techs not yet completed. So if there were a smattering of tier three techs not completed, going for malaria prevention here is kind of the context we're talking about. But doing this helps to ensure that other countries Countries will research other things for you to not spread while you use your active research to pick and choose the various best late game texts. And so as you get to the late game, in order to make sure that your innovation is still useful, you actually want to research tremendously inefficiently in the sense that you are going to be researching ahead of time and incurring huge penalties very, very aggressively uh, because you don't care as much about the penalty because innovation is so cheap relative to the size of your economy and instead you care about acquiring the tech more quickly. So you end up paying way more for the tech because you're being inefficient efficient but you don't care because the benefits of the tech are so large relative to the cost because the cost has been increasing linearly while your benefit has been increasing exponentially as you get larger. And so there's kind of a, you hit this inflection point where you take off. Now, eventually the number of universities, it's got to come to like a stop and like more universities isn't going to be useful because other countries can't research the tech fast enough. But, um, you know, before you get to this point, you can, as someone like Grace Xing, who started relatively backward end up sitting on you know several hundred universities you know maybe in the neighborhood of two to four to five hundred and having this be optimal because your economy is so large and your benefits from technology are so big that it's worth it for you to just blast ahead of time and really pick and choose like the choiciest text you know like going for compression ignition when you have half the tier fours left on research um, makes a lot of sense because other people will research those tier fours and then you can get compression ignition as quick quickly as possible um, and so this is a very common uh, play pattern just because of how the fluctuating value of innovation works throughout the game because it's going to effectively be cheaper relative to the benefits of new technology as the game goes on. We haven't talked too much about literacy uh, because this is really more about the institutions but literacy is going to be important you know throughout the game because in the very early game when innovation is effectively very expensive for you you will be 
getting a lot of free tech spread from your literacy and this will represent you know a very big chunk of uh, free spread or innovation you are getting while innovation is really expensive and uh, also in the late game literacy will be important because you are researching everything ahead of time and ahead of time research is always done with direct research and the the spread is trivial you can always add universities to get more spread and universities are uh, relative to the size of your economy are really cheap however what you can't add is you can't add more direct research and so direct research being so valuable makes it so that literacy is just going to be very very valuable throughout the entire game, although it's going to be valuable for different reasons. You get literacy both through your education system as well as two technologies which are going to give literacy from, uh, you know, just base value literacy from wealth education access, which is going to be quite strong. And so there's also the Ericsson company, which is just obscene. We're not going to take a closer look at it, uh, but you can see here both empiricism and uh, academia are going to be giving you uh, wealth based education access. And so increasing SOL will increase your literacy, um, albeit by kind of a small amount, and then also maybe not incorporating as aggressively as you otherwise would, uh, will increase it and allow you to kind of research ahead of time a little bit faster. Um, but throughout the game, literacy is going to be valuable, uh, and you are going to want to, generally speaking, uh, uh, kind of anytime you can increase your literacy or increase your education system, this is going to be a worthwhile thing to do. But I think that's kind of the, the nutshell of how you summarize how all of this is going to work. I hope uh, you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. It does help out. And other than that, have a good day.